Hi, I'm Ed Reese with Six Band Marketing and Local U. Welcome to this edition of Whiteboard Friday. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things in terms of Google Analytics, the dashboard. So think of your dashboard like a dashboard on your car. What's important to you and what's important to your client. I have the new Tesla dashboard. You might recognize it. So for my Tesla dashboard, I want navigation, tunes, calendar, everything in a bag of chips. You notice my hands are not on the wheel because it drives itself now. Awesome. So what's important? So I have the top five dashboards that I like to share with my clients and create for them. So these are the executive dashboards, ones for the CMO on the marketing side, new markets, content, and a tech check. You can actually create dashboards and make sure that everything is working. And these on the side are some, some of the few that I think people don't take a look at as often. Uh, it's my opinion that we have a lot of very generic dashboards, so I like to really dive in and uh, see what we can learn so that your client can really start using them uh, for their advantage. Let's start with the executive dashboard. There is a lot of debate on whether or not to go from left to right or right to left. So in terms of outcome, behavior, and acquisition, Google Analytics gives you those areas. They don't mark them as the re these three categories, but I follow Avinash's uh, language and the language that GA uses. So when you're talking to executives or CFOs, it's my personal opinion that executives always want to see the money first. So focus on financials, conversion rates, number of sales, number of leads. They don't want to skip through all the, they don't want to go through the marketing first and then get to the numbers. Just give them what they want. And in a dashboard, they're seeing that first. So let's start with the result and then go back to behavior. Now this is where a lot of people have very generic metrics. Uh, pages viewed, you know, generic bounce rate, very broad metrics. To really dive in, I like focusing and using the filters to go to specific areas on the site. So if it's a destination like a hotel, oh, are, are they viewing the, the pages that help them get there? Are they looking at the directional information? Are they viewing discounts and sorts of packages? Think of the behavior on those types of, of pages that you want to measure. And then reverse engineer, and that way you can tell the executive, hey, this hotel reservation viewed these packages which came from these sources campaigns, search, and social. And remember, you're building it so that they can view it for themselves and really take advantage and see, oh, that's working, and this campaign from this source had these behaviors that generated a reservation in that example. Now, let's take a look at it from a marketing perspective. You want to help make them look awesome. So I like to reverse it and start with the marketing side in terms of acquisition, then go to behavior on the website, and then end up with the same financials, money, conversion rate percentages, number of leads, number of hotels, hotel rooms booked, etc. I like to get really, really focused. So when you're building a dashboard for a CMO or anyone on the marketing side, talk to them about what metrics matter. What do they really want to learn? And a lot of times you need to know their, their exact territory and really fine tune it in to figure out exactly what they want to find out. So, Again, I'm a huge fan of filters. What behavior matters? So for example, uh, one of our clients is Beard Brand. They serve build beard oil and they support the urban beardsman. We know that their main markets are New York, Texas, California, and the Pacific Northwest. So we could have a very broad regional focus for acquisition, but we don't. We know where their audience lives. We know what type of behavior they like and ultimately what type of behavior on the website influences purchases. So really think from a marketing perspective, how do we want to measure the acquisition to the behavior on the website and ultimately what does that create? So these are pretty common, so I think most people are using a marketing and an executive dashboard. Here's some that have really made a huge difference uh, for clients of ours. New markets, love new market dashboards. Let's say, for example, you're a hotel chain and you normally have uh, people visiting your site from Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Well, what happened in our case, we had that excluded and we were looking at states broader, Hawaii, Alaska, Colorado, Texas. 
not normally people who would come to this particular hotel. Well, we discovered in the dashboard, and it was actually the client that discovered it, that we suddenly had a 6,000% increase in Hawaii. They called me, said, are we marketing to Hawaii? I said, no. And they said, well, according to the dashboard, we've had 193 room nights in the past two months. I'm like, wow, 193 room nights from Hawaii? What happened? So we started reverse engineering that, and we found out that Allegiant Airlines suddenly had a direct flight from Honolulu to Spokane, and the hotel in this case was two miles from the hotel. They could then do paid search campaigns in Hawaii. They can try to connect with Allegiant to co-op some, some advertising and some messaging. Boom, would never have been discovered without that dashboard. Another example, top content. Uh, again, going back to Beard Brand, they have a site called The Urban Beardsman, and they publish a lot of content for help and, and videos and tutorials. To measure that content, it's really important because they're putting a lot of work into educating uh, their market and, and new people that are, that are growing beards and using their product. They want to know, is it worth it? They're hiring photographers, they're hiring writers, and we're able to see if people are reading the content they're providing. And then ultimately, we're focusing much more on their content on the behavior side and then figuring out what that outcome is. And a lot of people have uh, content or viewing of the blog as part of an overall dashboard. Let's say for your, uh, for your CMO, I'm a big fan of, in addition to having that, also having a very specific content dashboard. So you can see your top blogs, your top, uh, all, whatever content you provide, I want you to always know what that's driving on your website. And one that I think that I've never heard anyone talk about before, we use all the time, is a tech check. So we want to see, you know, a setup so we can view mobile, tablet, desktop, browsers. What are your gaps? Where is your site possibly not being um, used to its fullest potential? Uh, are there any issues with uh, shopping carts? Um, where do they fall off on your website? Set up any possible, uh, you know, tech that you can track. I'm a big fan of, of looking both on the mobile, tablet, uh, any type of uh, desktop browsers especially, to see where they're falling off. So having, I, you know, for a lot of our clients, we'll have two, three, four different tech dashboards. Get them to the technical person on the client side so they can immediately see if there's an issue. If they've updated the website, but maybe they forgot to update a certain portion of it, they've got a technical issue, and the dashboard can help detect that. So these are just a few. I'm a huge fan of dashboards. They're very powerful, but the big key is to make sure that not only you but your client understands how to use them, and they use them on a regular basis. I hope that's been very helpful. Again, I'm Ed Reese, and these are my top five dashboards. Thanks.